Our first lightning speaker is a close colleague of mine, is currently the director of California Health and Human Services Agency's brand new Office of Innovation, because it's not as brand new as it once was. He was the director of product at U.S. Digital Services in 2016 and 17, and has served in numerous other positions in public and private sector. Today he's going to talk to us about some of the recent efforts to bring innovation to the Golden State. Please welcome Shani Emanovan. Thank you. All right. Morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? So just a warning, I tend to pace, so if you're like locked in and falling asleep in one spot, you're going to miss me eventually because I'm going to go that way. I tend to do that. I was telling my kids this morning that I was doing a lightning talk, and my uh, middle kid, she was, you're going to talk about lightning? I didn't know you are a meteorologist. I'm like, no, it's just, it's, never mind. It's a lightning talk. It's a, so I'm going to try to keep this quick. Um, those are not my slides, but that's okay. I will figure it out. Um, <laughs> That's okay. Um, so why am I here? Who am I? Why is this important? What's the capital of Assyria? Okay, maybe you're not wondering that. It's Asher, by the way. Um, and what is innovation in government? I gave this talk to uh, a bunch of students at uh, CSUS. And I was like, yeah, the government, a lot of times people think it's stuck in uh, 1970. And one of the kids went, you mean 1870? And I was like, yes, thank you. <laughs> we actually have typewriters and stuff like that. No. But the idea, oh, there we go. Um, but the question is, uh, can, who's controlling the slides? Next slide, please. All right, that's what I just did. Um, so government being stuck in 1970. Uh, my first government job, I was at the Bureau of Indian Affairs under the Department of the Interior. Oh, oh. Well, there you go. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, at the time that I went there, as a web guy to run the web team, was off the internet. So didn't know that. And I walked in, they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're off the internet. I was like, what? What, what am I going to be building? So uh, we were focusing on internal processes. So you want to talk about 1870. We weren't even using fax machines. We were literally sending people to deliver checks to people in reservations by hand. I mean, it was like Pony Express time kind of thing. So fast forward to after that job, I was at Consumer Financial Protection Bureau when it was a new shiny thing in the hill. And I was lucky enough to be in the uh, U.S. Digital Service for the last year of the Obama White House. So I saw different innovations during that time. And being in the government and seeing how it worked or didn't work, and then seeing how these other organizations were creating innovation, it let me start to see what's the difference between status quo and how we're trying to do business. A lot of times with government, we think, oh, we'll just do what Google or Yahoo or Facebook does. You can't just copy and paste their processes and expect them to work here. It's a different animal. You can't expect what works well in government to work in those private industries. It doesn't work the same. What I saw at CFPB and USDS was a hybrid, was a really interesting hybrid approach to take those principles and make them work. So this has been rolling around in my head for years and years and years, but there was no place to do it. So then fast forward to coming back to my home state of California from Rancho Cordova, so I'm a local boy. Um, then I see the opportunity at Health and Human Services. So I'm gonna, sh another shout out to Michael Wilkening. So as undersecretary, they, my deputy director, Tamara Serzentic, and other folks were saying, we should do this open data thing. He told them to get out of his office, which I love that story, because I think it's really, <laughs> because at the time there was a linguistic difference. Talking about open data and sending your data out there and doing hackathons to an executive in government, that sounds like a security breach. Get the hell out of my office. That's the last thing I want to do. But as the nomenclature differences and the explanation of what the benefits of open data became more apparent, they released it, saw that civic tech were building apps that we as government could never afford and could never do. Then the idea of creating an innovation space. Um, a FuseCore fellow came in, did some work, and then the idea of creating my office. There was already a office called the, now called the Office of Enterprise Tech at CDT. They focused on data. What was missing was the user-centered design, human-centered design. A lot of times in the government, we know the policies, we know the procedures, but what we're missing is how do people actually interact with us? And that is a piece and a discipline that was missing. 
sorry, I'm rambling because I heard the last speaker was so great. I had like a million ideas. One of the things that really bothered me in my time at USDS was that there was still a divide between the cool kids, the sneaker hoodie crowd, as some people call them, coming in and showing how to do digital service, and the state or federal employees who've been doing this work for a long time. And what I found, it's not an intelligence gap. It's not an ability gap. It's a skills gap, and skills can be taught. So that was the idea that I had. I came in. I was lucky enough to get the job. Um, and Wilkening gave me the ability to do things differently. If you want to do things differently in government or any other space, you can't just go like, oh, we'll have this you know, normal top-down structure and people do what they normally do and we'll magically get this other result. He was <laughs> game enough to let me do all these crazy things to restructure how this office is made. Is made. Literally, um, I won't bore you with reading the slide. I just sort of talked about this, but we're not a technology organization. When people hear Office of Innovation, they think, great, you're going to come in and give me a better printer. Nope. You know, if you're still using that you know, bi-directional dot matrix, I'm not here to fix that. Good luck with that. <laughs> what we're here to do is we're here to make the human processes better. There's an evolution to the office. First, we're going to get better at problem definition. Is the problem that we're talking about really the problem we're trying to solve? Or is it so large? Like, we're going to solve all nutrition problems for all Californias. We're never going to solve that if we phrase it that way. We have to break it into something smaller. Like, can we improve EBT card usage for this one county with Get Cal Fresh? If you take care of that problem and the next and the next, now you've taken a big chunk out of the problem. That's what my team focuses on, is problem definition, and then we use the human-centered design process to come up with crazy ideas, and then we stress test the heck out of them. We prototype, we iterate, we test with the actual people. At the end of, you know, we time box these, at the end of a couple sprints, we know that this solution will work. And then we can layer technology on top of it. So, I always tell people, we're here to make the humans work better with the other humans. We'll layer technology on top of it. Technology might be wickedly simple. And one example I'll give you later on, we literally created a Word document flowchart to uh, engage this uh, new workflow. Simplest technology you can think of, but we were able to uh, get 30% better workflow improvement just by that simple checklist to make people follow these new steps. The most impressive thing about that was the senior manager there said, the difference between people not knowing what the other person is doing and the friction between my staff is night and day, and that's golden. And that's the key. Those things are hard to measure, but no less important. So, um, mission and vision, don't want to bore you. But the key for me is this thing down here. I eventually want my office to not need to exist. I want to work us out of a job. We should be in the point where the things that we do aren't novel, it's just work. Like, why do you need an office? Because it's just work. But then we can evolve and do the next cool thing, right? But that's the key to this. So, um, values. So, for those of you who are my former colleagues at either USDS or 18F, yes, I shamelessly stole a bunch of these from USDS. <laughs> There's no copyright on it, they can't sue me. Now, uh, but really what we wanted to do, and what was important about values, is values help guide your behavior when there are breakdowns. And there will be breakdowns. This work is tough. Like some days I wake up and I'm like, why am I doing this? Because it's tough, but it's so worth it. And when you're stuck and you're not sure what to do, these values will guide you. Key one for me is that find the truth, tell the truth. Again, shamelessly stolen from US Digital Service. When you run into a situation where your team is like, we found a problem, and the problem is that there's a certain manager that's blocking progress, and we don't really want to call out this manager. Find the truth, tell the truth. Do it respectfully, but if you don't address the issue, that there's an interpersonal aspect to this, and that this person needs to personally grow to handle their staff and the conflicts in their staff better, we're never going to get past this. Do it respectfully, do it responsibly, but you have to find the truth and tell the truth, or we're not going to move on. Um, there's some other good ones here, but that's, uh, so I, just, I sort of talked about this. Sorry, I'm like going out of order here. Um, but I took the things that I'd learned from our brethren at USDS, things that I thought were great at US Digital Service or 18F, and tried to mash them all together into, uh, the, uh, add the 
the structure and the philosophy and the strategy behind Office of Innovation. So here's the key. U.S. Digital Service and 18F can hire really great people and bring them in, which I think is super important. So when I first got my budget, it is a staff of one, me. <laughs> so we can't hire anybody. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> what are we going to do? So uh, Mike had already sort of pivoted on this, and I think it was a brilliant thing. Let's, and it matched up so nicely what I just talked about in my philosophy, let's figure out how to get existing state employees into the Office of Innovation. So my staff are kidnapped, I mean, borrowed, from the different uh, departments, and they're with me for two-year rotations, either as part-time and full-time. So for eight weeks, they just go through boot camp, where they just learn these techniques. And then during the time with me, they practice these techniques till they become sticky. The idea is that they're with me, they learn these things, they build, and they learn and they teach that we have like three different goals with every single engagement that we do at the departments. And at the end of their time, they go back to their departments and they're ruined to the old way forever. They're gonna do these things habitually. So, I mean, it's tough. The, uh, the, the first cohort, they're kind of the guinea pigs in this. They're gonna go back and they're gonna tell their bosses, my skill set's different. You have to use me differently. But that is a good kind of friction because in that discussion, new ways of structuring and new ways of figuring out how people work together are gonna come out of it. So, um, I just talked about that. So we don't have money to hire like the cool kids in the upper right. So we don't do that. So we basically hire internally. Um, the other thing is in our skill set, one of the things that we talk about is facilitation. And I don't mean like, there's five minutes left in this meeting, or here's the agenda. I mean really talking to people and getting them to connect on a human level so that groups can come to group, I just said it twice, can come to uh, uh, group decision making. So it's not just you're the problem and I throw my problems over the wall to you. It's like, oh, I didn't realize that was a headache. Let's work together to fix this. We had one group where at the beginning, they were literally glaring at each other from around the circle. And at the end, people were hugging. They were going at the happy hour. They were <laughs> because this process, it, it works when you make people connect on a human level or help people connect on a human level. Um, the other skill set, uh, Human-centered design, we do a lot of training in this. Um, I won't beleaguer you with this, but we go through this. Um, we eight-week time boxed, um, so two-week sprints, four times. We go through this uh, four times in that process because as you get the problem, you hone in on it, you prototype, you test it, you see what works, you do it again, you do it again, you do it again. Um, one of the things that we also do is talking about facilitation. I wanted to share these ground rules with you because you can start using these today in your boring, you know, hopefully not boring, your boring staff meeting. Because these are so simple, but they're so critically important to what we do. Um, a lot of times people joke that we do like group therapy with a lot of these, and we do. We let people come and complain, and then after they complain, we move, we move on. But we try to do in our techniques processes to make all people be heard. Um, when you speak, make one point at a time. And here's the other thing, and this is hard for me as an extrovert. Only in a group of N, only speak one nth of the time. So in a group of five, you should only speak one fifth of the time. Um, the reason why that's important is it gives other people a chance to come into that space. And here's the other thing. Actually, sorry, I got these out of order. This is actually super important. Questions are an act of leadership. Because everybody, you have an expertise, you wanna go and share that expertise with the other people in the room. If you phrase your expertise as a question, you invite other people into that space. And now you might learn something, they might learn something, but it's not just, I'm super smart, I've been doing this for 30 years, ha! It's, hey, you know what? This is what I've experienced, what do you think of that? It completely changes the timbre of that conversation. Um, so this, um, in our engagement model, what I wanted to point out here, every two weeks we do a no-go, go no go with senior management if we're ever doing something wrong or down the wrong track we've only wasted two weeks that go no go is critical check back and go this is where we're going to go in the next two weeks do you agree if you don't let's pivot we're critically important um we also have, are there eight week models but we also do a two week model now and a 16 week model based on the complexity so last thing i'll, I'll talk about and then i'll stop yapping at you um product management as a product manager, in my humble opinion, needs to be one of the core competencies of state and federal employees. Honestly, I think that. Because what is product management, but it's 
building a thing to solve a problem. And if you think about the skills of needed from a product manager, you think about the skills of state employees. State employees know the rules, the regulations, and the desired business outcome, right? We know that really well. That's, that's, our, that's our wheelhouse, right? If you can layer on techniques to learn user needs, to understand the user experience, the voice of the user, and to do user research, now you understand what the people who are trying to interact with you are trying to get from you. If you under, layer on a layer of understanding about technology and what the abilities and limitations are, that, in my opinion, is a kick-ass, oh, sorry, shouldn't have sworn. Um, that is a great product manager. And we as a state are uniquely placed to do that. Then we can work with our technology partners to tell them clearly, this is the thing that you need to help us build to solve the problem. So this, to me, is a key core competency that we need to develop. Um, uh, I'll skip this. Um, I also think that doesn't mean project managers aren't important. They just do different things. Product. Pro, uh, project, product, and scrum should be joined at the hip. Project manager should be managing the contract. Product person can make sure we're delivering the right thing. Scrum master makes sure that the technical team has the tools they need to be successful. Those three people are working together, and I've seen this work numerous times. That is a team that drives real results, real value. Um, okay, so I'm totally out of time, but I wanted to tell you about some of our uh, successes. We've only been around about 10 months, so we're new, and a lot of times these things take a while before you really see the benefits, but um, with one of our agencies, they needed to calculate the distance to provider. We gave them a new flow, dropped a lot of the issues they had with collecting data in crazy formats to a more streamlined format. Got that to be about 30% faster. That was the one where they also said the reduction in frustration was unmeasurable, but worth its weight in gold. It's unmeasurable, worth its weight in gold. That doesn't make sense. Uh, it's worth, <laughs> it's unmeasurable, but super valuable. How about that? Um, so we also applied what I was talking about, product management for our LAS system. So they were able to prioritize the functions that were needed before the new ledge cycle. And they got people the things that they had been waiting for for years in a three month period instead of waiting for years, just by reprioritizing. Um, one thing we, um, one organization was telling us that they were hiring people, but it was taking three, four months to get them through the process. And by the time they said, you got the job, they were like, I took a job three months ago, but thanks. So we helped them not only come up with a better description. Um, one person who heard the description said, I didn't know this was a state job. I want it more now. This is great. So not only did we change the type of applicant pool, but we had a feature where they were able to have different messages to ping them every couple weeks through the process. So they stayed engaged in the person who took the job. It took three months. It wasn't that much faster, but they stayed until they got the job and they're super thrilled. So little things like that make a big difference. Um, Another one, there was a complex process where it was taking people six months to get um, into a certain uh, government service. Uh, we looked at the process. There was a lot of redundancy. There was a lot of um, coordination between the central office and the different regional offices, and they were having a lot of um, conflict. By, that was the group that people were glaring at each other. By the end of that and by helping them figure out a new flow, we went six months, we got it down to, we think, 70 days, and we think in our next iteration, we'll get it down to about three weeks. We're still figuring out how this works because they're building the enabling technology, but we already know that, at least on paper, this is a massive change, and people are working together. Um, so the last thing, um, there was another project where there was a certain um, key population that was not, there's only getting about 70% of the services from this one agency or department that they should be eligible for, there was a certain county that was crushing it. They were hitting like 80, 90%. Didn't know about it. They weren't telling the central office about it because they were afraid because they were doing it in a non-standard format. Central office would say, stop doing that successful thing. By making them come together and making them go, hey, safe space. We're happy that you're doing this awesome thing. How can others do that? We facilitated a way to scale that up and now other counties are following that. So. Early successes, I'm really optimistic about the future. My second cohort's about to start in a couple months. We're gonna start doing more technical delivery, but uh, you know, we're hoping that we continue to crush it. So thanks for your time.